thank you so much, Dr. Neil, and thank you for the organization to invite me to so much, Dr. Neil, and thank you for the organization to invite me to talk about how to combine traditional Chinese medicine with mainstream Western medicine in the fight against COVID-19. And today I'm going to first start talking about a little bit about what's going on in New York in COVID-19 uh, outbreak and also talk about the experience from China, how that could be helpful to our fight here. And I'll use an example, a case study, to show how we can introduce traditional Chinese medicine elements into Western medical systems. And finally, I'm going to talk about what we are actually doing in the field to help our patients in this outbreak. Thank you, Chinese 分析来看，讲一下我们自己的经验，怎么把针灸这个中医的一个很重要的部分介绍给呃，并且整合到西方的一个西医的肿瘤中心里边。最后我讲一讲我们现在我们在做一些什么，在抗疫的工作中做的事
So please uh, play the video. Please. 好了，请放一下视频。And there's a constant stream of COVID-19 casualties. So we're now in the critical care area of the emergency department. Everyone that's in here today is experiencing two breathing problems, almost uniformly all from COVID. We've seen such a large increase on a day-to-day -day basis on the number of patients who are presenting in critical condition, requiring really all the resources that we have to provide in order to help them. Dr. Aitan Dickman says there are normally 17 <coughs> beds in this room at Maimonides Medical Center. Today, there are 32 patients, and the numbers are rising rapidly every hour. We have opened up new ICUs, new intensive care units, we've opened up new medical units in order to accommodate for this increased demand of patients who are coming in so ill. In a city of extremes, this pandemic has been a painful equalizer. This is an intense, demanding, and desperate atmosphere in here. The patients keep coming. And it's not just the elderly, it's the young too. And they're all struggling. It's a daunting new frontier for medics, even for the most experienced. Obviously, seeing a large number yeah. of critically ill patients. Yeah, I've seen some of the sickest patients I've ever seen in my whole career. Uh, not only are they in front of us, but they also have their diabetes that's out of control. Um, so it's particularly hard, and we're learning how to do it, how to manage. It's a brutal learning curve and an often unforgiving fight for those with existing health conditions. Really, the main effect that we're seeing is, is a significant effect on impairing the lungs' ability to provide the oxygen that the body needs, and then it spreads, it affects the heart, it affects the kidney. Ultimately, unfortunately, often take time taking the ultimate toll. Elsewhere in New York, there's a dire lack of personal protective equipment for frontline medical staff. Some are so desperate, they're making their own. Maimonides was well-prepared and well-organized, but they haven't faced the eight. But here, brave doctors and nurses are working every minute, risking their lives so they can save others. So this is what's happening in the battlefield. You can see the hospital system is being overwhelmed. There's not enough people, not enough personal protective equipment, and not enough ventilators because a lot of people are very sick. So when we look at the COVID-19 patients, there's a, about 20% of people who have serious disease and about five to 10% of people who need for a respiratory failure and need ventilation. And that is the part of patients who are consuming a lot of healthcare resources and causing a lot of problems in the management of this pandemic. So the key question is, how do we treat severe and critical patients to reduce mortality? At this point, we really don't have a good way other than supporting their organ function, put them on the ventilator to support their respiration, oxygenation, and hoping their body's internal ability to fight the disease will kick in and overcome the illness. Another major problem is the patients with mild symptoms. How do we prevent them from progressing into serious disease? Then they will start to have mortality death and also consumption of healthcare resources. Again, we don't have a very good way to dealing with it at this point. It's mainly to monitor them and escalation of care when they need it. So when you look at the number of patients, this is each square is one patient. If you count 100 patients, 
about five to six percent would need ventilation and that is what you hear in the news nowadays. This is the news co press conference from New York State Governor, New York State Cuomo. He said, "We just don't have enough ventilator." Period. He said, "Our ventilation is not enough." So, if we can reduce the number of patients who need ventilator, this will be very helpful. And if we can prevent these patients with mild symptoms from progressing to serious illness, that will also be very helpful. And in this lecture series, we heard before from many other speakers that the incorporation of traditional Chinese medicine into the treatment of these patients have shown some good results. In this lecture series, 讲坛系列的以前的几位大师的讲解中，我们听到了，把中医结合进治疗新冠病人的时候，会有一些帮助，让轻症的病人更少的变成重症，然后在重症的时候也可能减少他们恶化的情况。So we have to ask ourselves why. Most patients, actually, a lot of patients, they only have mild symptoms. Even though this virus is very new and nobody has seen it before, so how how did that happen? It's because the ability to fight this virus is already in our body. We all have it, in you, me, him, and her. The question is, how can we harness and enhance this ability? So, for to answer that, we have to look at how COVID nineteen virus cause problems. So, when they first come in, the virus get into the system, get into your respiratory tract, attach the cells. They go in, they replicate, they propagate, and then they got released to infect other cells. So, this is an area. What's going on in your lung, in your trachea, may actually influence. We're talking about local micro environment. On the membrane, uh, uh, on the mucosa around your lung and the trachea, is that the environment that make the virus more likely to stick and enter, or more likely to keep them out? So that's one key factors in why some people got sicker when some others got not so sick. And then once the virus propagated. Your body's immune system start to kick in. For some people, this can be quick and strong. For others, this may be weak and delayed. Then you'll be have a, you'll have a problem. The virus will start to propagate out of control. And later in the course, the immune system can become too active and start to attack our own cells too much, create a lot of inflammation, the so-called cytokine storm. Which damage a lot of our organs. So, how do we find the right amount of immune reaction that control the viruses but does not hurt ourselves? That's a very tricky question. And towards the end, patients will succumb to ARDS, respiratory failure, myocarditis, the the, the heart muscles are inflamed, and usually these are very hard to reverse and. Uh, uh, that cause a lot of death. So when we look into the differences between patients, there are several hypotheses why everyone responded differently.、Uh, keep in mind these are just hypotheses; they have not been proven. One is if you contact virus in a very small dose at the initial exposure, you may have a milder disease. If you have a lot of virus exposure, you may have a more ser serious disease. The other one is the ACE2, which is the receptor for the virus to enter the cells. Every one of us have a, a slightly different. This is called a polymorphism. So my ACE2 and your ACE2, looking at the chemical, the, the protein, the structure of protein are slightly different, and maybe the virus will bind to some more than the others, so they infect one person more easily than the other. 
So this ties into a lot of uh, discussion in previous lectures about the Chinese medicine definition of constituents. Another one that's involved in the immune reaction is the HLA polymorphism in antigen presentation. So some people, they process the viral antigen better, present it better, and the immune cells start to activate and attack the um, the virus and the generate the antibody reaction better. Another one, is, another possibility is the reduction of the T cell receptor repertoire complexity with aging. Because when we are young, our immune system has a very comprehensive repertoire. It's like a large library. You have all kinds of books. So when the virus come in, even though it's a new virus, you may just happen to have a book that matches this virus. But as we age, especially uh, if we have other underlying problem, our immune system will age faster, and we lost, we gradually lost this TCR T cell receptor complexity. So our ability to fight the virus will be weaker. So this is, to me, this is very similar to the traditional Chinese medicine uh, concept of Wei Qi Xu Ruo, the the da bai. 病毒啊，或者细菌的这个能力减低了，因为免疫系统的呃随着年龄的增长，免疫系统那个细胞的受体和敏感度都下降。So at this point, uh, people are trying everything to explore all options in fighting the COVID-19. From Western medicine, there are a lot of focus on number one, repurposing existing drugs to treat the disease because this is much faster. The drugs is available already. Or investigating new therapies that focus either on stopping the virus from enter the cells, stopping the virus from proliferating inside the cells and release them, or stopping the cytokine storm, which is the one that hurt the patients and leads to death. So here are some of the um, examples of these therapies are currently actively under clinical trials or even just used off-label use. Hydroxychloroquine, Liquid, Azithromycin, uh, Achimesu, Zinc, Xin, Remedavir, Arbidol, which is not available in the United States but available in other countries. And then there are a few protease inhibitors, or these are target therapy designed usually to treat cancer, but then now repurposed because um, the virus appears to have some protein can be targeted by uh, this enzyme, this, these inhibitors. And convalescence plasma, is another promising way. In addition, there are ways to engineer antiviral antibody and produce in the outside in the lab or in factory that can neutralize the virus. And then you have the uh, anti-IL-6 or anti-IL-1 antibodies. And ACE2, which is a recombinant ACE2 that can be combined with and some far out, out of the box thinking like NK, CAR T or CAR NK cells therapy or stem cell therapy. Uh, these are very investigational. Uh,干细胞啦,NK细胞,这些都是很早期的概念性的,还没有任何临床的数据证明是有效的. Because of this lack of therapy, there's a strong demand for Chinese herbs and acupuncture during the outbreak. This is a report from New York Post and newspaper showing uh, a lot of people, uh, the public, uh, have a lot of them are interested in traditional Chinese medicine already. And now is the time they are have a heightened interest and start to uh, do something for themselves because there's no good treatment at this point. So at this point, um, in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to talk about what we already know about T 
TCM research uh, for COVID-19. A lot of them are done in China and it's uh, coming out all the time. So the data is constantly changing. And what I'm saying now may not be uh, valid uh, a little later because new information will come out. So there's three levels of uh, incorporation of TCM into COVID-19 um, treatment. At uh, the first level is a national level. Um, there are several versions of clinical practice guidelines has been developed over time. Now, I think the latest is version seven. And then there are individual studies, clinical studies, either clinical trial studies, either clinical trials, prospective studies, or cohort studies. And then there are lots of also preclinical laboratory studies, mainly look at the active ingredients, active constituents, and mechanism of actions. So the clinical practice guideline shows that for monitor disease or light disease, there's several herbal formulations that may be helpful. Uh, these tend to be the anti-inflammatory or qing fei xuan qi de. These are mild symptoms. And for treat for people with moderate symptoms, there are a lot of, uh, according to the guideline, there are several formulations but that have to depend on the TCM pattern diagnosis. And that creates a problem to be used in the Western medical setting because um, they are not so available and also hard to scale up than some of these ready-made capsules or granules that can be mass-produced. Uh,如果辩证来处方的话,在西方的应用的时候,可能会有一些现实性的不太可行,因为药材的来源呀,还有这个大规模的生产都是一个问题。And uh, uh, for severe symptoms and critical symptoms, sometimes in, in, intravenous formulation is being given, and there are also a lot of room for TCM to contribute during the recovery phase. Acupuncture has also been um, uh, used in fighting COVID-19. Uh, here's a acupuncture guideline produced by China Associations of Acupuncture Moxibustion, uh, and they are very specific in what points to use, what technique to use at, at which stage. So I, I hope there's an English version that can be shared. And uh, the one I have is Chinese, uh, but there are a lot to be learned here. Granted, in the Western medical setting, in the current situation, just look at the video earlier, it's very frantic in treating these patients. And also we want to minimize contact with patients because the PPE, the personal protection gear is not very, very strong. So at this point, we cannot do acupuncture for COVID patients yet. And clinical studies, there are also a lot of clinical studies, uh, many publications in Chinese li literature, more than a dozen ongoing studies using TCM techniques. And a lot of them are presented in other lectures in this series. So I encourage everyone to go to this website, look at the past series lectures and review them. And I did, and I learned so much from previous speakers uh, that I, I, I really thankful and appreciative of their time and effort. And then here are some of the, if you look at the herbs, uh, here are some of the ones that are most commonly used in these formulations. Um, Huangqi, Astragalus, Gancao, Baishu, Changshu, Jinhua, Juga, Huaxiang, Guanzhong. These are some of the common ones uh, that has been summarized. And then, uh, but when we present these things to our Western medicine colleagues, they ask more questions. They ask for what's in it that's working. What's the, what are the active constituents? And what are the mechanisms of actions? What are your targets? 
do you have randomized controlled clinical trial data that will show this is definitively working? Uh, 他们经常会问你这个里边到底哪个是有效成分呀这里每一个药里边有几十个上百个成分他的重要机制是什么呢有没有有对照组的双盲的这种临床实验呢所以这些事情我们都需要来解决 so, so what we do is we really summarize you know, we have to speak the language they understand and we summarize uh, what, what we know already from the mechanistic standpoint, the active ingredients, uh, this kind of communication helps them to feel more comfortable using TCM herbs. So, when we have these tools and tools, it is more important to be able to use them in the most important way. So, here are some of the examples like Hong Jing Tian, Lai Ju, Dan Lan Gen, and Quercetin. 抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗抗
呃是个大城市，他已经看到一些这些病人，所以呃建立了这么一个医院。In 1999, uh, Sloan Kettering established an integrated medicine center, which focused on incorporating non-Western tradition and non-drug-based intervention into cancer care to help these cancer patients. And the, our mission, working uh, to, this year is our 20th anniversary, and our mission has been to has always been to make integrated medicine part of standard cancer care. And our goal is to improve patients' experience, outcomes, well-being, and survival. So, our mission is to make non-drug-based and non-drug-based things together. No matter what the treatment method is, if we only look at the results, if we only look at the science, look at the evidence, look at the evidence, and put them together, make the patient get a better experience, a better experience. 医疗效果、总体的健康和生存期，最终的目标是让中西医，有时有一些我们也用一些印度医学的，或者是欧洲传统医学的，比如说自然医学的东西，把它都结合在一起，成为治疗肿瘤病人的标准疗法的一部分。这是我们的呃使命。So how did it start? Because uh, Sun Kettering is a very big. Western Medicine Medical Center is started by visionaries、um, in the leadership of the institution.、Um, for example, Doctor,、uh, for example, Mr. Lawrence Rockefeller, who, who said, "You know, this is the example of Strong Kettering's willingness to take risk and make bold moves to push cancer care to the new heights." 他刚开始起始的时候，因为他是呃，我们这个肿瘤中心是一个非常呃传统的一个西医的中心，但是呢，是在呃领导层里有一些很有远见、很有眼光的人来推动这个事情，因为他们看到的不是今天、今年、明年、五年，他们看到的是二十年、四十年、五十年以后，呃呃，治疗肿瘤的医疗应该变成什么样，所以他觉得。呃，他们觉得应该把这些其他的东西包含进来，但是我们就要研究它，要知道什么东西有用，什么东西有害，什么东西呃既没用又没害，要把它怎么整合在一起，能得到最好的结果。呃，最终的目的呢是让肿瘤病人的呃治疗得到更更高的高度，所以一定要勇于承担风险，不能缩手缩脚，要采取大胆的行动，但又要要严格和谨慎。这样才能呃把它做好。So our experience when we first started acupuncture in our institution, it was very hard because、uh, people, our Western medicine colleagues, have never seen acupuncture. A lot of them don't know what it is, and they just see we put needles into people's body, and they are not comfortable with that. So they they don't didn't like us to touch their patients, but now. Acupuncture is a fully integrated part of this cancer center's operation. We are just like any other services. The doctors can order acupuncture just like when they order a drug or a CT scan, and our therapists can go into the hospital and treat patients or treat them in the outpatient setting. 在我们刚开始的时候，这个西医对针针灸不是很了解，呃，因为他们觉得你把针放到体内安全吗？有效吗？是什么个作用机制啊？你怎么一放进去，它就有效果了？所以呢，当时他们比较不是很开放。但是经过十几年的努力，现在针灸在我们医院已经成为一个呃标准疗法，就是所有的病人都可以用。呃，西方西医大夫呢，他们也就是呃可以可以写医嘱，就是定这个。他在电脑上说：“我今天。”呃，让这个病人用这个药、那个药做个 CT， 做个 X 光，也做个针灸，我们就变成他们的完全的一部分。So how did we get here? Here are our experience. We think are important. 嗯、um, ，我们怎么从经过努力达到这一步呢？是我觉得下面有一些经验要想跟大家分享分享一下，我觉得很重要。Uh, the first one is to build trust and credibility, and we have to speak the language everyone understands. Uh, not just our own language, but the language 
other people speak and understand. And ultimately, we have to deliver superb clinical services. 如果疗效好，最后还是要用疗效和数据来说话。所以，如果一个西医的病人久治不好，呃，送到我们这里来，我们把他弄好了，回去以后，我们经常发生这种事情。呃，西医大夫说：“哎，几个月没有看到你，你怎么变了一个人？发生了什么事情？”这个病人就会给呃他的原来的主治医讲。发着我们用了针灸啊什么的，他们就渐渐的就了解，就就知道了，就会介绍更多的病人过来。And the next one is important is to rigorous research, because without research, we cannot push the boundary. We can only repeat what we have been doing, and we cannot generate innovation, because even though TCM is a very ancient、uh, medical system. There are also a lot of room for innovation, for innovate, innovating、uh, the technique. Uh, 科研呢，不光能够产生数据来呃指导我们的应用，什么时候用什么，什么时候比较有效，还能让不明白、不了解的人能够更加了解和理解和应用呃针灸。同时，科研还可以让我们进一步创新，因为虽然中医针灸是一个很悠久的传统，但是在现在这种时代科技发展，有很多可以创新的空间，这些都是需要科研来，呃，来做到的。But if we have all this data, if we don't disseminate it, it's not enough. So we have to disseminate the knowledge among medical professionals, give lectures, uh, uh, give seminars, and public do publications, and we develop clinical practice guidelines and incorporate them into the healthcare system. 所以，光有疗效和科研还是不够的，因为这个效果只是在我们呃，你的一个医院一个中心。要想把它扩张呢，必须要传播，传播通过呃发表文章，做各种讲座，呃，教育这个西医对中医和对针灸的了解，同时发开发这种临床指南。这种指南呢，是西医用的指南，在里边我们呃。说你在这种这种情况下可以用针灸，可以用什么？然后最后呢是要把它整合到整个的医疗系统里面，透明性。So there is a saying from Franklin、uh, Benjamin、uh, Franklin who said it takes many good deeds to build a good reputation and only one bad one to lose it. So we always keep this in mind and be very careful. So I use the example how when we talk about talking about speaking the language. Here's the example. So in acupuncture, we talk about meridians and so on. So these are ancient pictures showing the meridians. Ah,、uh, 这些呃、uh, 在跟西呃、uh, 西方同行交交流的时候，我们要说他们能理解的语言，不能自说自话，要说他们能懂的语言，尤其是西医训练出来的人能懂的语言。呃、嗯，这些事情呢，对于纯中医的人可能觉得不够纯粹，已经有点变味了。但是呢，不这样的话是无法呃进一步推广这个呃，不让更多的人了解和理解，是我们只能这样的话是无法呃进一步推广这个呃，不让更多的人了解和理解，是我们只能呃是不无法更更更产生更大的效果和更多的推广。So this is the meridian、um, in Chinese character, but、uh, people don't read it;、uh, they don't understand. So WHO actually codified it and make them letters and numbers, right? So a, a large intestine twenty instead of yin xiang,、uh, we say ally twenty. So this is much easier for them to learn, and also、um, we define the anatomic landmark for them to to palpate to locate these points. In addition, there are people doing research on the anatomy of these joints. So they'll say, "Oh, well, you put the needle here and there. How did you pick this point? Why did it work? Why did this doesn't work?" So there are people looking at the, this acupuncture point. Interestingly, they all located above myofascial planes. They're 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 all located above myofascial planes. During embryonic development, these are segment of the tissue that goes along and develop. So there is an actual structural 
uh, basis for that. And then there's a scientist in Dartmouth University in, um, in Brown who studied what goes, what happens when the needle goes into tissue and when you twist and turn and achieve the dirty sensation. Uh, 你研究这个针灸进去体内以后，在你眼针啊、提针之后，有得气的时候，到底发生了什么？他用这个呃超声来看体皮下到底发生了什么事情。So she used an ultrasound to look what happened under the skin in the tissue in real time when you were manipulating the needle, and she found that it actually wind up the connected tissues, and this kind of pulling and then this kind of mechanical stimulation can convert it to neurological stimulation. 他发现在眼针的时候会产生一种机械性的变化在体内，它会产生下一步产生神经性的。So this scientist, this this medical doctor who studied acupuncture, now becomes the head of the National Institute of Health, the National Institute of Complementary and Integrated Health。所以这个呃，我们的这个呃科学家 Helen Langevin 现在成为美国国立卫生院。整合医学分院的院长，他是以从研究针灸出身的。So in addition to that, there are a lot of good paper published on top journals. This is a paper published on Nature Neuroscience, 在自然科自然杂志神经科学上发表的一个文章。这些高层次的高重要高呃高 impact factor 的这些呃文章对这个。uh, this paper shows if you knock out, uh, this is an animal study, if you knock out adenosine receptor and the analgesic effect of acupuncture is gone. So, this is the first time you have to use the same thing as 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 the 明确无误地显示出腺肝是其中的一个神经地址传递的。So this, this kind of research will, shows, uh, will convince a lot of the skeptical, skepticism uh, on the mechanism of action in acupuncture. And there are also functional MRI study scanning people's brain to see what happened in the brain and uh, that, that change in real time when acupuncture is being done. And there are changes that can be visualized and shown on pictures. And here are some of our own study. We will be focused mainly on clinical trials uh, because you can do a lot of mechanistic study, but without clinical data, it's hard to say whether they're really effective or not. And we need to have good controls. So this is a study we did a couple of years ago, giving acupuncture to treat bone marrow transplant patients because they experience a lot of symptoms. Look at the peak, the blue line, the peak. And after transplantation, they have a lot of symptoms. If they got acupuncture, the peak is gone. We can flatten, the peak is gone. We can flatten the curve. Um, so now you hear a lot about flattening the curve in COVID-19. Um, this is acupuncture flattening the curve of symptom curves in bone marrow transplant patients. 这是我们做过的一个随机对照组的一个可以研究针灸来压制肿瘤病人做骨髓移植的时候他们的症状很厉害尤其是一个礼拜以后非常厉害在用针灸的病人中他们的症状也没有那么强And also we found these patients did use much fewer uh, drugs, pain medicine, especially opiates And the red line are people who are getting sham or getting sham acupuncture the blue lines are those who got true acupuncture. Uh, 在同时你看到得, uh, 用了针灸的病人和, 没, uh, 和用这个伪针灸的病人的人, 它的区别是很大的,就是有很多人就不会变成慢性的用牙片剂的病人。如果是骨髓移植时疼痛很严重的人, 用了牙片很难下来。So based on this data, we recently awarded a grant by PCORI, Patient-Centered Outcome Research Institution, a multi-million dollar grant to study this in a multi-centered, randomized controlled fashion. Uh, 根据这些科研成果, 我们现在最近, 
呃，得到了一个很大的基金，几百万美元的一个从 p i c o r i 来的，让做一个多中心的呃随机追对样组的和呃来研究针灸在减少肿瘤病人的症状上，尤其是减少用鸦片剂的呃上面的效果。So this kind of research will shows the rigorous research we're talking about that will meet the standard of uh. To be incorporated into the development of guidelines. So, in in a lot of these uh, uh, professional society, we draft guidelines, working with them. Including, um, 针灸啊，还有其他一些整合医学的疗法，对扩张扩增这个疗病呃呃其他医生，尤其是呃全国不太非呃。非学术机构的人对这些的了解是非常好的，这样他们就觉得用这些呃针灸啊什么，他就觉得比较呃保险，因为有大的协会，他们的所属的协会的呃配置。And our guidelines are collected into the National Institute of Health, um, uh, uh, clearinghouse. Um, uh, three of these four guidelines were developed by our, our groups. And also, the national at the national level, at the federal level, there's a joint commission that inspects all the hospitals in the United States.、Uh, if you don't pass their inspection, the hospital has to be shut down; they cannot operate. And there, they mandate we have to use non-drug therapy for for pain management, including acupuncture, massage, and some of the other、uh, relaxation therapy or other、uh, integrated medicine treatment. So even the U.S. Army、uh, start to incorporate acupuncture in their practice.、Uh, they use they teach、uh, soldiers to do a quick and simple ear acupuncture to suppress pain, so they don't have to take pain medicine or take opiates. Ah,、uh, 即使在美国军队里，陆军呃和空军、呃、还有海军都在试用这个训练士兵使用简学会使用简单的耳针来镇痛。这样他们就不会必须得用药啊，或者是用鸦片剂、麻醉剂这种。所以，呃，在有足够的证据和好的 A 呃数据的时候，呃，针灸的应用就会变得非常呃，针灸的推广就会变得非常容易。So it's so much easier to um to to uh improve the utilization of acupuncture when we have strong data and、uh, from rigorous research. So there are several seminal studies、um, done on pain management, and this year, a few months ago, Medicare actually starts to cover acupuncture for the first time、uh, in the history. 有好多非常里程碑性质的研究证明，针灸对症痛症，特别是腰痛啊、关节疼非常有好处。即使这些都是趴在《扎马》上，就是美国医学总会的这个杂志上发表的。这些这些数据加上。呃，美国的一些呃鸦片类药物的泛用，造成了现在联邦政府老人保险开始呃包括针灸了，这是历史上的第一次，就发生在几个两个月以前，在以前针灸是联邦保险不包括，商业保险有时候会包。So what can we do during COVID nineteen? Um, how do we function in this setting? And Here are things we have already done, and they're very much welcome and implemented. And the first one is lifestyle counseling to strengthen the physical resilience.、Uh, because 养生强体，我们下面是做养生强体，我们下面是做了一些给我们现有的病人的一些咨询和帮助，就帮助他们养生前提，减压排忧，还有还有一个帮助他们腹式呼吸，这个我待会儿会讲啊。So. Um, because if you look at the virus infection, a lot of people they will fight the virus off just by themselves、um, because they have a strong immune system.、And、for those who are getting sick, you also want to have a strong immune system to not to make it become a serious case. We also do a lot of mind body practice to reduce stress and anxiety. Because this disease is a very frightening disease. Many patients have a lot of mental problems, but these mental problems also make their body symptoms. 坏处，因为压力我们知道是一个很强的免疫抑制，对吧？在 stress 的时候，你的免疫力是下降。So 
stress is one of the biggest suppressors for immune system for the immune system because we give people stress hormone to suppress their immune system. So if we can reduce stress and anxiety using non-drug therapy, will be very helpful. So when we do lifestyle counseling, we use several approaches. We look at nutrition. Uh, uh, so we focus on several ways of uh, nutrition because right now, uh, because a lot of people don't want to go out and buy and eat in restaurants or um, do a lot of takeout, it's a good time to learn home cooking. Because home cooking is always much healthier, better than uh, takeout food. It's also a good time to eat well-balanced food because you have choices in selecting what to eat, what to put in your pl- on your plate. But if you eat a lot of junk food in the past, you go to a fast food restaurant, they're not going to be healthy. They don't give you a complete an, uh, a nutrition. And because people don't want to go out to buy grocery, they tend to eat less, which is always a good thing in the, uh, in the society where obesity is a big problem because people eat too much, they eat more than they need. And this is a good opportunity for people to eat a little bit less and feel like, oh, it's still okay. I can still enjoy my food and um, I don't have to eat that much. So in this time, because many people are in the hospital, Gai the immune system needs to have uh, to be boosted by exercise, which is very helpful. And but a lot of people they don't have room; they all stay at home. They cannot go out and run or do bicycle. So we teach them how to do the three kind of actually have one. They least you don't need much room, so and much time also. One is seven minutes workout. So only seven minutes. And on the right side, you will see there's uh, several routines. Uh, it takes seven minutes to finish that, but give you a good workout. I call it fast food exercise. Um, uh, the second one is Tabata, which is a four minutes high intensity interval training. So if you really, really short up time, you can do this four minutes things, really high intensity, get your heart pumping really hard. Uh, it's showing the, in the picture there. And then yoga and Tai Chi don't need much space either. But uh, 以前要做的运动都做不成了，现在呢，我们就介绍他们做一些简单的、很快的，就不用占地方，你也不需要去健身房，在家里就能做的，用个椅子呀，用个自己的身体就可以做的七分钟快餐啦，四分钟高强度间
clear, clean mind, then you sleep better. And if you sleep more soundly, you can wake up, you should wake up naturally, not by alarm clock. Um, so that's a good, deep sleep is one of the best immune booster you can have. And another problem is the uh, anxiety and stress, right? So uh, we need to rest our body. We also need to rest our mind. Especially our employees, uh, they have ex because of the uh, disease and the crisis, um, the, the pandemics. They feel a lot of bad uh, feelings, like feeling powerless, sadness, anxiety, panic, grief. They feel overwhelmed, exhausted. And they have married, marital family relationship concerns because they're working from home and parenting problems. Uh, so, uh, same thing, we will also do things for our patients. So here are some of the programs we, uh, we develop. Uh, for example, like chair yoga to connect the mind, breath, uh, and the body, um, and uh, to calm the nerve system. So called the peace from within, teach them Zen, Zen breathing. Uh, to, uh, you have a sense of oneness and calmness, and calming escape, and guided imagery to let you go to somewhere more pleasant and less stressful or less chaotic. And music therapy, um, smile to your heart, um, because music can touch. I touch our spirit in a very profound and deep way that no words can do. So we develop specific new music therapy to help that. It's not just to uh, listen to music. Uh, music therapy is a special profession that will uh, uh, that that has a very uh, uh, special way of using music to for therapeutic intent. And how do we get ready to sleep and rest? Uh, we, we teach people how to do the yoga nidra. And another thing we're another thing we're doing for our patients is to help the Western medicine colleagues to manage these patients. Uh, so a lot of these patients are on the ICU ventilator because they don't have enough oxygen. And they found if people do so-called prone ventilation, the oxygen will be better. And look at the CT scan on the left, uh, on the in the corner. If you lie on your back, the back side of your lung are filled with inflammation and fluid and so on. But that's the part you need a lot of volume to ventilate, to breathe. When you flip over and lie on your belly, you can see the back side of your lungs free up. So without doing anything, just flipping the patient's back, you improve their oxygenation. So we're now doing a lot of this for people with moderate symptoms to see whether they can prevent them from escalating to, to ventilation and ICU care because ventilator is in short supply now. But this is a position not very comfortable and a lot of people are not used to. So we designed a very strong regimen to help position them in the right way, in a comfortable way. And they can lie in this position for hours and hours because that's what they need uh, without discomfort. 
We also develop music therapy so they can listen to music, they can listen to audiobook to help them pass time. And we have guided imagery to relax them because when they're scared uh, in this position, they breathe faster, that creates more damage to the lungs. And another thing we, we can use is acupuncture. Right now, we are not, we have not implemented it, but there's some area acupuncture can be quite helpful. Uh, there are good paper published on nature medicine uh, showing acupuncture can reduce inflammation, uh, can reduce inflammation associated with sepsis. So they found ST36 electric acupuncture can reduce inflammation markers, it's mentioned cytokines. So maybe that will help reduce the risk of cytokine storm. You can see the TNF, uh, interleukin 6, and um, interferon gamma, they all suppress when control when compared to control group. And they found in animal studies, this reduced the death rate in sepsis, uh, in mice with sepsis. And there are also paper published uh, in China, uh, from China in English language showing acupuncture in, combine, in combination of other traditional Chinese medicine bundle therapy prevent sepsis uh, and death in um, elderly patients. So he so this is a survival curve of these patients. These are uh, run a control group compared with control group. Those group have got traditional Chinese medicine therapy, including acupuncture. In severe sepsis, the death rate is less. So, so those are the things we are currently doing. We also want to incorporate traditional Chinese medicine herbs because if you look at the data from China and the study from China, they showed a lot of promise and especially preventing um, mild disease from preventing them from uh, progressing to serious disease. So, but there's some challenges as well. Um, one is availability. A lot of these herbs are not available now, especially now there are a lot of publics are buying out everything. So a lot of things are sold out, including many herbs or herbal formulations. And the second one is quality assurance. Because sometimes uh, there has happened in the past where a drug uh, or herbal medicine has not met the quality um, assurance uh, standard and uh, create some problems. And, but what we can do is to disseminate the research finding to our colleagues, to other clinicians. So we're giving seminars, handouts, and so on. And for that, we also need help from our colleagues in China who have a lot of experience using these therapies, using herbs, to have strong publication. Um, uh, I know there are now a lot of them already, uh, but we hope we can have some strong publication in the English literature so we can share in an easier way to our Western uh, medicine colleagues. So, in the world, the world is a very important thing. The world is a 一定要保证质量，要不然的话就会呃损害所有的行业和大家。And所以我们现在主要做的是介绍中医应用的经验和科研成果。如果有英文的呃好的这个呃文献啊，对我们的工作就更更方便一些，我们就可以更好的把它大
stop all the incoming traffic forever. 呃，下一步会发生什么事情呢？就新冠现在已经全球扩散了，不像以前，如果在中国彻底的消灭了就好了。现在全球扩散，回流的人很多，但我不能又不能无限制的、永久的下去锁国，不让任何人进来，因为也不是一个长久的可以持续的一个办法。所以呢，关键最后还得靠呃好的疗法和疫苗的出现。So, uh, 这就是一个大概的一个预计，呃，是摩根斯坦利呃做的，呃，大摩他们做的，但是我有的地方不太同意，我讲一下。呃、uh, ，so this is a prediction of a COVID course. So you look at it from the left side is now, and you go to the right side is the future. Uh, so around April there was a first wave of outbreak in New York City, LA, all these big cities in the United States, and then a second wave come in in May. Um. On the smaller cities in the rural area, so you have a big peak there, and then they will subside a little bit, and then、uh, I think you know the therapy, especially some of the antiviral therapy, will come out either in April, late April, or May. Hopefully,、uh, keep our finger crossed. And then、uh, their therapies come out to treat serious, critical ill patients. So the Mortality rate is less, and also by that time, the production of ventilator, ventilator, the availability of ventilator will come up. So people, all people who got treated, who need to be treated, got treated, and the, the death rate will come down. However, it may come back later this year、uh, because the virus may still lurching around in the community and come back in the fall. Hopefully, by summertime of early fall, the vaccine becomes available. And usually,、uh, they are used first for healthcare providers because they are high exposure, and then later available to the public. But I disagree. In the curve, drops are so low because I think even later there are always some low-grade infections. So this is what we predict will happen in the future. First, there will be a large number of people in big cities who get infected, then small cities and the same with the population. Because now it has already spread. They have not yet been able to. 能够能力把所有的人都收入，就是轻症的或者是呃无症病人带毒无症病人无法收入，所以他在社区内传播是肯定会继续进行，只不过希望在下个月或这个月的或下个月四月或五月或者六月有药出来能够压制一些，然后呼吸机也上来了，呃这样呢死亡率会低一些，但是呢我觉得还会在社区内呃低强度的传播，然后到秋天又会再爆发一次。呃，希望在那个时候疫苗已经出来了，所以这是一个长期的，呃，呃，斗争，呃，阻击战，比如说武汉的阻击战已经打赢了，但是这个现在变成持久战了，因为已经全球流行。So this become a, a big problem, a long term problem. So even now there's no case in China, but we have to be very vigilant in in taking care of the problem that's coming up in the future. 呃，这就是呃呃，纽约州长说的，这是不是一个长短跑，是一个马拉松，因为这个东西要做好打持久战的准备。所、so, 以呃，要待在家里，不要传播，来拯救生命。So so the、uh, New York City governor said, I, I agree. Um,、uh, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon because this is not going to go away in the next month or two. Uh, because the Horse is already out of the barns, and you cannot take them back. So everyone stay home, stop the spread, and save lives. But it's hard to do that. It's hard to do that for a long term. So we have to、um, think about anything that will、uh, help us manage the disease, including traditional Chinese medicine measures. So even now, we are not using some of the herbs or some of the acupuncture. We are prepared. To use it down the road when it comes to it, when the、uh, environment become、uh, feasible. So, even in the present, we are not using a lot of herbs and medicines. We are just using some relaxing or to improve the immune system. But I see that when it becomes a long-term battle, in the next few months, we will use this kind of herbs because this kind of thing. 如果在呃有效并被西医理解、了解、接受的时候
，它是能对抗疫做出很大的贡献。So this is a time when Western medicine, uh, it's a good time for Western medicine to get to know and learn more about traditional Chinese medicine. So this is also a time of distress, fear, stress, suffering, death, and loss. This is our time in New York City right now. Uh, this is a picture, a、uh, video clip I taped、uh, a couple of days ago on the street of New York. This is what's gonna、uh, what it looked like. So you know the Empire State Building, they lit lit up the top.、Uh, um, different、uh, locations they have different colors, and now. Lit up in red and flashing red emergency. Um, this Great Wall of China, New York Great Wall of China, often has a light. Ah, for example, uh, China's New Year's Day, it will turn red and white. If it's the New Year's Day, it will turn red and white. If it's the New Year's Day, it will turn red and white. This is what I recorded. Wait, please hold it. 所以大家看到帝国大厦的灯在打着双闪，紧急情况，紧急情况，我们需要帮助 SOS。街上有各种救护车的呼啸的声音，所以大家都有很多的恐慌、危难、压力、痛苦，还有的人经受了死亡和失去的东西。但是这也是一个表现人性温和、同情、微笑、更好的自己和善良的时候。So it is a time for distress. And suffering and loss, but also time for humanity, for gentility, compassion, smiles, and our better self and kindness. And this is a heartwarming box we received because a lot of people heard we are short on PPEs, we're short on personal protection equipment. So a lot of people are donating and shipping these things to healthcare providers.、Uh, when I received this, I was、uh, so moved. Uh, by the good wills from our fellow citizens in the communities,、uh, a lot of them also coming from China,、uh, our concerned friends and, and colleagues from China shipping these things to help us. Because you you saw in the video earlier, the PPEs used here may not be、uh, enough. This is my very heart warming box from some. 那个捐赠的人员给我们这些医护人员聚呃募捐出来并配备寄过来的，有很多是我的朋友同事，很多是从中国呃，他们很关心我们，呃，保护装备可能不够，就寄过来，非常暖心，还附了一个小条，上面有非常好的话，我显示一下。And in the box there's a, a piece of paper I like to show you. It's very heartwarming and moving. It says, "Dear." Healthcare providers, thank you for being at the front line as we work together to overcome this virus and keep our communities in good health. We especially appreciate your dedication and selflessness during this time of crisis, and are holding our your、uh, are holding you and your families in uplifting thoughts. Be safe and best wishes. From the one you are protecting, it is the one we are protecting that gave us the strength, and the and the,、um, and the will, and gave us the ability to do everything we can to help those we are protecting. So, I would like to end and close with this. It says, "In a world where we can be anything, be kind." Thank you. 
and benefit greatly. Uh, after listening, there are many questions, but uh, because the time limited, so please uh, consult Dr. Den. The Den, Dr. Den below, please answer a few questions. Uh, please. Okay. Okay. Um, so I have uh, several questions. Um, uh, some of them I already talked about in the talk. I'll just pick the one that does not uh, talk about. Uh, one question is, uh, we'd like to know, you know, in traditional Chinese medicine, we talk about holistic care. But in, in the United States, what do you mean by holistic care? Uh,有一个在澳大利亚的华人医生提到,我们在中医里讲的是整体观念,就是全面治疗。在美国的全面治疗是个什么样的,有什么意图? Uh, so, uh, 在美国的全面治疗 so uh, in the United States, when we talk about when we talk about holistic care, we're not really using the purest traditional Chinese medicine way. They they focus more more on mind body spirit connection. So a lot about the interaction between mind and body, and nutrition and lifestyle. So those are the things as I discussed are the ones that are very welcome, very they very open and very accepted. And I hope in the next step is to incorporate some of the deeper TCM measures that after research we found can really help people to incorporate that. Uh, so next, next question is about how to uh, how we are using acupuncture in COVID treatment. And as I mentioned earlier, right now, uh, because of the isolation and fear of infection of acupuncturists, we're not doing that. But I think once the protection is higher up, we may be able to do that later. And let me see, there's uh, other questions. One minute. Let me take a look. Um, Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, here's our other questions. Um, um, one is about the, the healthcare providers stress. Uh, we already talked about that. Uh, another one is the, um, it's about the development of COVID in the future. We already talked about that. Um, The last one is uh, in cancer patients, do you use acupuncture or herbs? Yes, we do use acupuncture routinely. Herbs, we, we don't use as much, but we are experimenting uh, in some pilot project to see how we can introduce herbs safely uh, into the cancer population so they can benefit without getting harmed. 因为西医的这个还有一些顾虑,所以我们一般都选择精心的选择一些比较安全,而且疗效比较有可靠的一些要渐渐的用在实践中显示疗效以后可能他们就更容易接受。Okay, thank you, um, thank you everyone for your time, and uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here and share our experience. 感谢大家有这个机会和大家分享。Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Dan.